merchant just wouldn't let him forget. So he made an incredible decision to take justice into his own hands. Here's ABC's Deborah Roberts. His name is g -Dep, short for Ghetto Dependent. Sean Combs even teamed up with him in his music video, Let's Get It. He led a gangster life and glorified it in rhyme. And he'd pay a great debt for committing a crime, betrayed by the last person anyone would have suspected, himself. I was the only way I could have been absolved, you know, a person who sacrificed. How he got there is a story in itself. g Depp born Travell Coleman dropped out of college at 18 in search of a music career. He paid for recording sessions by selling cocaine on the streets of Harlem, New York. He dabbled in drugs. In the fall of 1993, a month before his 19th birthday, he mugged a stranger with a gun. We were standing under the scaffolding on Park Avenue, 114th Street. I was riding my bike. I said, well, oh, give me the money, man. But a guy grabbed the gun, you know, and I pulled the gun back, and that's when I fired. How many times did you fire? Three times. He fled on his bike. As he left home the next morning, police were canvassing the neighborhood. They said, do you know anything about a shooting that occurred yesterday? And I said, nah. That made me think he didn't pass away because they said shooting. A week later, he got rid of the gun. And I went to the East River and threw it away. And that was the end of that? Yeah. Full swing, full strings like rock and roll. Coleman stayed quiet about the Harlem shooting, throwing himself into his music. Then, five years later, he caught the eye of Sean Combs. How much were they going to pay you? Well, uh, the record deal was for uh, three, 350000 You know, it was definitely, you know, more money than I have had seen. He had fame, fortune, and now a family, and the stain on his past. How much did it eat at you? It seemed like it just wasn't fair for me to, you know, be happy, you know what I'm saying? I used to curb my happiness, you know, like just, now wait a minute, I'm, I'm smiling too much, I'm laughing too much. He remained haunted by his secret, that shooting in Harlem. Whatever happened to that man? Was he dead? I thought about whether or not he had children. He could have been a father, and here I am trying to be a father. Did anybody know that you were hiding from this demon, this thing in your past? I, really, I felt like I couldn't really tell anybody because uh, I didn't want them to be involved. Burdened by an unbearable secret, g -Dep's music career suffered. Sean Combs dropped him from his bad boy label. Probably was the drugs. I was just knee deep in trying to, you know, medicate myself. Everything was boiling down. The guilt. To that, yeah. In late 2010, Coleman couldn't bear it anymore. He confessed to a police officer he'd shot a man 17 years before. The police did nothing. Maybe he thought that you were just uh, faking this. Yeah. Incredibly, Coleman later went back to police to confess again. What led you to walk into that police station? I think I was just at a point, you know, where there was like enough is enough. But nobody else knew about it? You could have just kept quiet and dealt with it on your own. The dealing with it was killing And after a while, you know, after I told him what happened, you know, he said, I just wanted to let you know that the guy died. Suddenly, you're charged in a murder. Did you start to have second thoughts? Nah. Travell Coleman had charged himself with murder. You have to, we were wrestling with this as jurors because this man's already gone through hell and he's done something noble. But he did kill someone. I completely understand that for the people who knew John Henkel, it's a different story. The jury found Coleman guilty of second degree murder. On May 8, 2012, he was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. The case of Travell Coleman has haunted me. One of your twin sons said shortly after you confessed and were arrested that he said he was going to take... Get that hug. Get that hug. Get that hug. Yes. Yes. Come on, get that hug. Santa Claus. <laughs> Yeah. 
That boy home. The deputy. Thank you. Let me get you. Social media. You see the week going? Yeah. Yeah, I have everybody. Well, Scramble that experience. Oh, my God. We at last. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I mean? The family came and got me. I'm going to get you. You see the people. Man, a lot of artists. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Give me one more. Go. Why you hot? Show up, man. Show up. You showed up. Yo, yo, yo. It's Big Ant, the spokesman, man. We back. Another edition of Urban Politicians TV. UPTV. Make sure you stay on your pivot at all times, man. Had to come tap in. And first and foremost, I do want to say condolences to the entire family of John Hankel. He was the guy that was shot and killed by G. Depp in that botched robbery in Harlem back in 1993. To so his entire family, they loved him as close friends and people who are still going through with this loss today. This being surfaced in the news is most definitely raising the question of somebody that they love and making them think about that. So condolences to all of them. God bless, most definitely. And I had a link in the description for ABC News where you can watch that documentary of full at that they did. And also, I'm going to get it to a write-up from NBC New York with the clemency that he had got last year. But if you didn't know who G-Dep was, bad boy artists came in the game heavy. I remember that time. And just with everything going on right now, I instantly said, what a time back then and what a time now. I was looking at G-Dep and them every day, BET, Rap City, 106 and Park and things like that growing up. And then coming out and hearing that story, I remember reading it online back in the game when he had turned himself in. But I had never fully looked at all the details, but I did remember him saying, hey, I shot a man, but I had never knew that he didn't know that the guy was dead and everything like that. And he had spoken in the documentary as well. He had kids out here and all that, but his conscience was eating him alive and everything. And for him to come home right now, after the clemency got announced last year, at the end of 2023, and we see what's going on right now with Diddy. So you can expect a lot of people gonna start pointing at this story. People are most definitely gonna be reaching out to him to get the story originally but now they gonna tie it to Diddy in which he has said himself that he was on drugs and he was going through it, which is why the deal kind of didn't work out for him and his understanding at that point in time, he was like, man, I was on drugs, I was going through it and things like that. But Special Delivery, his album, I remember Ride To It, Rest in peace to Black Rob as well. Condolences to his family and loved ones. That was an era, that was a time most definitely. And the write-up says this, now 49, Coleman has served 13 of a 15 year to life sentence with his sentence being commuted by the Democratic governor. He will now be allowed to seek parole earlier than his original 2025 date. Coleman is one of 16 individuals granted clemency by Holcher in an announcement made Friday. They include 12 pardons and four commutations. It marked the third time Holcher has granted clemency in 2023. Through the clemency process, it is my sole main responsibility as governor to recognize the efforts individuals have made to improve their lives and show that redemption is possible, Holchel said in a written statement. The rapper earned an associate's degree while in prison and facilitated violence prevention and sobriety counseling programs while also participating in a variety of educational and rehabilitative classes. According to Holchel's office, his clemency application was supported by the prosecutor in the case and the judge who sentenced him. As G. Depp Coleman has had hits with special delivery and let's get it and helped popularize a loose limb dance called the Harlem Shake in the early 2000s, the rapper was one of the rising stars of hip-hop impresario Sean Diddy Combs, Bad Boy Records label in the 1990s and early 2000s, but his career slumped after slump after his 2001 debut album, Child of the Ghetto, 
and the rapper became mirrored in drug use and low level arrest, his lawyer said in 2011. And I would have to say this probably has to be just the way everything played out. One of the craziest storylines for a rapper in the hip hop culture, most definitely. Even him going, trying to turn himself in one time, and then they said, no, we didn't. they didn't take him serious, so he came back again. Him not knowing that the guy had passed away and everything like that, and then everything going on with his career as well. But he said he was eating his conscience alive. He wanted that clear mind and that freedom in his soul. So him going through the drug usage, him going through it at that 18, 19 year old time, to my understanding, he was using drugs and selling drugs at the same time by its robbery. That's wild in itself. And then him being able to come home to his family, they still there rocking with him. So condolences to the lost person and also you know, hopefully he can get past and get, uh, stay on the right track and be focused. Came out with a large bag of books, just getting that knowledge up most definitely. But now he coming home with this train wreck in the media. And like I say, with Diddy, innocent until proven guilty. But we know how this conversation finna go online with the theories and what people finna say and things of that nature. We'll keep y'all updated. G-Dep, keep holding your head up. Keep doing better, man. And everything like that, 1,000 for shit show. Stay on your pivot.